to start with, what is Research for Life? It's the collective name for four programs, Henari, Agora, Owari, and Ardi, and it provides lower income countries with free or low cost access to academic and professional peer reviewed content online. What's showing on your screen is the website for the Research for Life <coughs> programs partnerships overall, and we've got the URL visible as well so that you can go and look at the website when you wish to. Research for Life is a public-private partnership. That means there's both public entities and private entities who are part of the partnership. The partnership includes the World Health Organization, which I represent, the Food and Agricultural Organization of the United Nations, who's our host for this webinar, the United Nations Environment Program, the World Intellectual Property Organization, Cornell and Yale Universities, and the International Association of Scientific, Technical, and Medical Publishers. All of these partners work alongside technology partners such as Serial Solutions, which is a library software company, and others as well. Research for Life's goal is to reduce the scientific knowledge gap between higher income and lower income countries, and we'll talk a little bit more about what that really means. So, why is information important? Well, information is important, we'll make that assumption, to researchers, academics, and policy makers. But it is also important to ordinary people or ordinary workers trying to do their jobs or live a more comfortable life. So I'm going to ask you to imagine a few things. Imagine you don't have access to any consumer magazines or other reliable sources of information when you want to buy a car, a washing machine, a new stove, a lawnmower, something to make your life easier. So you have no idea whether you are about to buy something that is quality and will last or whether it is something that really is not very worth a lot of money and it will stop working tomorrow. Now imagine you're an engineer and you're trying to build a bridge across an important river in your neighborhood and you don't have access to any information about the breaking points for the materials you want to use to build this bridge. Are you going to be happy walking across the bridge with your family tomorrow if you don't know whether it's going to break? And lastly, imagine you're trying to grow vegetables to sell in your local market without knowing anything about the plants that are most resistant to pets in your region. Or you don't know whether or not the plant that you're trying to grow is going to grow properly in your climate. Do you think you will have a very good crop yield to take to the market without knowing any of that? So this is the sort of imagination that helps you lead to the point of why is information important. Now, the lack of information is frustrating for those who face it and saddening for those who are imagining or remembering a time when that barrier existed for them. Research for Life is a library that opens doors to a wealth of information and hopefully alleviates that frustration. Before Research for Life began, there was a time when medical students were studying from teachers who taught from lecture notes that they took 30 years before. There were university libraries who had very few books and all of those books were quite old. There were government officials who were setting policy without access to the latest public health or agricultural research. And this scenario was very common for every country at one point or another in their history. For the present day lower income countries, all of them were facing these kinds of issues at the end of 1990s, and that was before Research for Life became available. Now let's talk a little bit about what Research for Life means in terms of access to information. There are 21,000 journals available through Research for Life. If you stacked up a single issue of every single one of those 21,000 journals and was able to keep it from falling over, it would stack up to approximately the height of the jet d'eau in Geneva, which is a very large fountain, and you may have seen pictures of it. 
And those 21,000 journals, and how tall that makes it all, doesn't even count the 49,000 books that are also available through Research for Life. Now, of course, everything available through Research for Life is in online or digital form, so there's nothing physical that we can stack up. But it does help you realize exactly how large the collection of materials is. So who are eligible? This slide notes the location of the Group A countries, which are shown in blue, and the Group B countries, which are shown in orange. Group A countries are able to get the Research for Life access and content for free, and the Group B countries have to pay a small annual fee in order to have the access. In 2016, there were 117 eligible countries, areas, and territories. The same eligibility criteria are used for all of the Research for Life programs, so a country that is Group A for Hanari is also Group A for Agora, Awari, and Ardi. However, it's important to note that an institution must register separately for every program. And if you want to register, there is a registration guide available on the Research for Life website. The document is a step-by-step -step guide to completing the registration form online for Hinari, Agora, Owari, or Ardi. The registration instructions are available in English, Spanish, and French to help those who, for whom English is not their native language. Following this document guide on the website will ensure a faster response to all the registrations that are made for any of the programs. Note that when you fill out the form, only one program can be selected for registration at a single time. You can use the form to register for the multiple programs relevant for your institution, but you will fill it out again for each program. Now let's talk a little bit about the partnership, because partnership is a key ingredient in Research for Life. What you're seeing on the screen in all of that tiny print is about one-third of all of our partners. It's an extremely large partnership. The key partners are, of course, the four United Nations entities, Yale and U Cornell University libraries, and more than 200 publishers. Now I want to show you some of the portals of the different Research for Life programs. This one is the Hanari portal, and through each of the tabs on the screen and the menus and the links, you can browse thousands of information resources. For Hanari, there is also a special version of PubMed included to help make it easier to discover the articles and book chapters of interest. This same portal, if you look in the upper right hand corner of the website shown, is available also in Arabic, French, Russian, Spanish, and Portuguese. And again, this is to make it easier for people whose native language is not English to make use of the portal. And now I'm showing on the screen the Agora portal. As you can see, the portals look quite familiar and similar. Again, it is true that you have access to all of the journals and books once you've logged in using your institutional username and password. Each program issues a separate username and password for access to their content, so you will be logging in with a different username and password when you access Agora versus when you access Hanari. Note that the usernames and passwords can be distributed to all staff and students at the institution. And again, this is the Awari portal. Once again, it should look very familiar. Once you learn one portal and where to go to find information on subjects or languages or by publisher, all of the other portals will look familiar to you. Lastly, I'm showing the Ardi portal 
ARDI is the newest of the programs and is still growing very rapidly in terms of the number of institutions that are signed up for ARDI and the number of content, number of titles of content that are available in ARDI. So, you suddenly have access to 21,000 journals and 49,000 books. Do you actually then know how to find easily what you are looking for? Or is it buried in an enormous stack of information? It's important to consider how to make use of all these publications. And for that, you may need training to be most efficient in your explorations. This is the training page that is available from Research for Life. You will notice that there are many sections on training on this page, and there are two showing right now on this screenshot about Research for Life and authorship skills. Once you scroll down the page, you will see four additional topics of training. Those are reference management tools, program-specific training, how to find out more about distance courses and workshops, and other resources that are available. If you click on the authorship skills part of the training website, you will see that it contains a series of presentations and exercises, how to read a scientific paper, how to write a scientific paper, copyright and plagiarism, strategies for effective writing, web bibliography, and frequently asked questions. Similarly, if you were to click on the Reference Management Tools section of the training page, you will learn about Mendeley, which is a basic version, Zotero, which is open source, and both of them are available even to individuals from non-Research for Life eligible countries. The training presentations review how to download the software and use the numerous options to create footnotes, develop bibliographies in multiple formats, as required by different publishers. And then there is the program-specific training. Each of the websites has specific training materials for Henari, Agora, Owari, or Ardi, where you will find targeted training materials that are specific to health for Henari, agriculture for Agora, environment for Owari, or technology and innovation for Ardi. So once you've learned how to use this resource, does it make a difference? We have made some studies and looked at the impact that Research for Life has had on researchers and practitioners, and it does make a difference when it opens the doors. I will give you one example, which you can find in the Make and Making a Difference booklet, which, by the way, is linked from the Research for Life website. Dr. Sami Kambiri is from Burkina Faso, and Agora has opened Dr. Kambiri's eyes to the importance of information management. Agora helped him to develop better and more informed scientific writing skills, helped him to produce research that he can discuss with top researchers worldwide, and helped him to compete more effectively for research funding and deliver better teaching programs. Research for Life has also made an impact on librarians because Research for Life and librarians are a powerful combination together. Again, this is a booklet with various stories from these unsung heroes, and it's available from the Research for Life website as well. One story that's in the Unsung Heroes booklet is about Shaba Shabana, who is a passionate librarian from the Maldives. If we can encourage people to use Research for Life in their research and to publish, we can build up this young country more, she says. It's my goal to be part of this change for the future. Shaba believes that high-quality, evidence-based scientific literature is essential to enable researchers and students in their new environmental science program to find ways to protect their island nation from threats posed by global climate change. We are educating the students who will become future policymakers, she announces. Research for Life can help them make better, more informed decisions. So this is what Research for Life is all about. 
It's been a very basic introduction that we've given you, but there is much more that you can find out about it on the Research for Life website and from the different programs, and you can always ask questions. Thank you for taking the time to be with us, and I look forward to our discussions.